Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another special edition of the show. So I'm up here in the Nahe, right? Na, it's not Nahe, right? You just Nahe, say it. yeah. Nahe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we don't. So yeah, I'm learning how to pronounce all my German now. <laughs> um, so we're at uh, Weingut Donhof. Donhof, yeah. Okay, and more the Weingut. I you know make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, I have Anne here with me, and uh, we've already kind of explored some cool spots. We went to the top of this mountain basically hill uh had some cool wine and uh i got some awesome pictures which i'll, I'll insert here while, while we talk about it and we're back here to taste some wine and um we're just gonna go from there so ann why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us who you are and all well kind of, of course hi my name is ann dunhoff uh, i owe the winery together with my husband um as you Probably some of you might already know we produce a lot of Riesling, a lot of different Riesling. So 80% of our production is Riesling and 20% is Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc. We do that in the beautiful Na region. The Na region has a size from around 3,500 hectares. And the specialty of the tiny, tiny region is that we have around 300 different types of soil. And this makes this place so unique. And it's really tiny. so. Um, mm -hmm. Some people miss it because you're just driving past it and in a swoosh you're gone. Yeah. So it's great to have you today here. Thank you very much. And thank you. I'm happy to show you a little bit, a little excerpt about the, the terroirs and the wines and explain a little bit about the region and of course about our family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, we're going to, um, so kind of talk about the winery itself, how it was founded and, and how long it's been around. So we are a fifth generation winery and we have a over 250 year winemaking tradition. Um, winemaking in this family started like as a side business. So um, when you think about now, there was, a, of course, a lot of farming going on here. And same with our family winery. It really grew organically. Yeah. So we started with uh, Growing potatoes, some cows, some pigs, and some a little bit of vineyard. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, the more we got into wine, um, the more the focus went on wine. And then in the 1930s, the family completely concentrated on winemaking. Okay, um, and. Uh, uh... You've got, you've got a lot of wines here. We're not drink, we're not tasting all these, but we've got. You make a lot of different wines, so kind of go through what, what type of stuff that you make here. So we have uh, nine different Grand Cru vineyards, mm -hmm. and this is really, I think, what's the most exciting part here. I, I spoke about the different types of terroir we have here, and and the good thing or the great thing about our Rieslings is that you're able to taste and to mm -hmm. differ all these different types of terroir very very clearly with uh, our ongoing tasting today and okay. I think this is really wonderful to see how different uh, Riesling can respond to different types of soil and how dry wines and sweet wines can uh, show wonderfully how uh, the Na is performing here, yeah? Okay, um, so first off, we, we went to the top of this hill, so what was the name of the place we the, went to? Um, it's called the Lemberg. Okay. Basically, we are, the winery is around sea level, so we're not very high here, mm -hmm. yeah? and this is like the highest point in the valley where you can take a, a beautiful look into the vineyard. It's really outstanding and a beautiful place to go. Yeah, so I took some pictures, which I should be already, have already started putting up there. That was the cue for me to get the pictures. Um, <laughs> and there's actually a restaurant up there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. it's a schnitzel place, so mm -hmm. if you want to go for some schnitzel, you can go there, but um, later on I will take you to a 
yeah. we're going to somewhere else for, yeah, for to lunch. To a good a restaurant yeah. where uh, it's really worth going. Okay, very nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the view is amazing uh, from up there, and um, you can see everything we we saw. We can see the division between uh, where the Grand Cru's are. As a matter of fact, you said the river was the difference between Prussia and Bavaria. Yeah, that yeah. was the border. Yeah. So I, I mean. I mean, I kind of knew where I was at in, in Germany, but not really. You know, my, my geography of Germany is pretty limited. Um, so it was kind of cool to see something like that because, you know, growing up, you hear these terms and like Bavaria and Prussia, yeah. you're like, okay, they mean nothing kind of, yeah. well, not nothing, but they don't mean the same thing to yeah. us as it probably means to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's like it's like probably trying to tell you the difference between the North and South in, in America in the United States for the Civil War. It's kind of like, well, yeah, we, we kind of know where that it's, is. It's, uh, yeah, it's even in wine, it's a very traditional background, mm -hmm. and it, it explains a lot about the cruise system we have yes. here, and about the vineyards, about the history of the vineyards right. as well. Yeah. So on the uh, on the side that um, is was the more Bavarian side, you said that you do a lot of your Pinot stuff. You have your Pinot Blanc. Yeah, on the peak. Yeah. Yeah, on and the, Pinot Gris, mm -hmm. um, and then on the, the Grand Cru side is where all your Riesling is, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what else can we talk about? Uh... <laughs> I can maybe uh, give you a little more of an introduction of the middle part of the Na, where we are. Yeah, now. yeah, why don't we talk about that? Yeah. So, um, the middle part of the Na, of course, is the most scenic part. If you ask any other parts of the Na, they will probably tell the you the thing, right? same. <laughs> But <laughs> and the middle part of the Na is uh, very interesting because you ha we are living right in the middle of our vineyard. So if you take a look at the photo and you see the winery there, you will see everything is literally around the corner. Mm -hmm. So um, when we do the harvest, uh, we are always right in the middle of our vineyards and we can always uh, check what's going on. So being a winemaker is a seven day passion and profession mm -hmm. yeah yes it doesn't stop uh, when uh, nature doesn't stop when it's saturday so we are always uh, in the business and always checking and uh, doing the best for our vineyards even yeah? this time of year right yeah yeah i mean We're it's now, a little slower but still yeah, it's, it's a little slower but our people are outside pruning and mm -hmm. getting straw in so it's always there's always something to do if you work with nature right yeah. you're actually talking about the straw so you have the straw on, uh, on the ground to help with um, drainage. drainage and yeah. erosion and yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially when it rains. Yeah. Well, that's what happens with drainage and erosion. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, and you you farm fairly sustainably. Yeah. Yeah. We are a member of the Fair and Green Sustainability System, mm -hmm. which. Um, I just told you in the car, I said, well, our great grandfather kind of established the system <laughs> right. yeah, because he's just said one very easy sentence. And this is really, I think, a good definition for our fifth generation, five generations of winemaking and mm -hmm. our idea with nature. It's working against nature is too expensive. Right. And I think this puts everything where it belongs because. Uh, on the one hand, we are still farmer, and mm -hmm. everybody knows farmer, farmers love to save money, of course. Yes. They do, yeah. And on the other hand, it, it means a respectful treatment of your environment, because winemaking is a generation contract. It's nothing that ends after your death. It's something that you will plant the wines today, and maybe your son or your, your children or the kids of your children will have the best or will get the best out of the wines. So okay. it's, it's nothing that you want to waste in one generation. Right. Yeah. It's, and um, the, the vineyards that we're having are all very historic and um, have a long, long heritage. And for us, it's uh, one of the major important things to preserve that and carry on with mm -hmm. that in the best possible way. Cool, I like that. Um, and you know, I've I've been all over, and you know that that that's the overriding theme. A lot of times is is having, you know, sometimes sustainability with your with your vineyards, um, wh whatever that means to each to each winery. But you know, trying to you're you're dealing with an agricultural product, and you know, you don't want to just you know destroy your land and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's get into some wines. I know we're gonna have, we have some stuff that we're gonna get into. So. What is the uh, what is the first one that we're doing here? We are now starting with our so 
It's a premiere in a way. We're starting with cask samples from our 2018 vintage. So I'm happy nice. to share that with you. I hope it's going to be very interesting. And uh, at the same time, we have our estate Riesling dry as well as our Tonschiefer. These two wines uh, reflect the two major soils we're having here in the middle part of the Na. It's slate and volcanic. Okay. Yeah. So the first one is the dry estate Riesling that we are just having in our glass. It's grown on different volcanic vineyards around okay. this area, around the village. So it's a blend from different vineyards, okay. no single vineyard wine. But for us, it's very important that the basic wine has a good structure. Now you see, we work here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the basic wine has to have a fitting and gripping structure and shouldn't be too light. Very typical for this wine is um, a slight fruitiness. You mm -hmm. get a wonderful fruity palette as well as kind of this like wet stone volcanic idea. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a there's a there's a there is that. There's the wet stone. There's like a, a chalkiness a little bit to yeah. it. There's also a. Um, in the United States, we have a candy called sweet tart. I don't know; they probably have something very similar over here. <laughs> but there's, it's not that it's sweet, but you have like you have the fruit, but you have that tartness to it. Mm. Um, and then the sweet tart also is, has a texture of chalkiness to it. Mm. Um, so I, I tend to get that a lot with with rieslings and other white wines that have those similar qualities. Mm. Uh, sweet tarts just a great way to just put everything into one into one mm. word. Mm. Um, so 2018 has been a little bit of a challenge. Maybe this is also yeah. interesting when we continue to taste the wines because it was a super warm year. It was mm -hmm. literally, it was summer from March till November. We skipped spring and autumn, yeah? We just had wonderful, warm, warm, endless summer. Unlike today, which is not summer. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we have April weather, we yeah. call that. And, um, the challenge was we had a very early flowering due to the very warm period in the beginning of the year. And um, a big problem for us is always frost mm -hmm. in April and May. But <coughs> sorry, um, luckily we skipped that. So we didn't have any frost in 17. We suffered very badly from the frost, mm -hmm. uh, but we had beautiful wines. Yeah. Okay. In 18, um, it was a very warm summer and um, yeah, it was intense because because everything was very, very dry and you wouldn't know if you will have a harvest at least. Okay. But um, we started very early normally, or the average start of the harvest in the last decade is around 5th of October. Okay. Our first pick was spa for sparkling in the last August week. Okay, yeah. Which is crazy. And uh, we started with Pinot Blanc and Pinot Gris in the first September week, which is okay. super crazy for us. And second September week, we started with the first three things. That's insanely early for us. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I understand why, but can you understand why you, for your sparkling, you're picking so early, What, why you do that versus like waiting till a later time? Because um, our idea of sparkling or of wine in general is not to be too opulent in mm -hmm. style. And you want to have, if you have a sparkling, you want to have a nice acidity. You don't want it too op to be too opulent, too right. much of a body. You need to have like a certain balance which doesn't turn to opulence. Okay. And so we will always, if, if the ripeness is there, we will always be like the first to pick the sparkling. Okay. Um, just want to make sure that you understood. <laughs> <laughs> I understand why, but I want to make sure my viewers yeah. understand why. Um, yeah, uh, this wine is really nice. Yeah, it's a, a typical reflection of the mm -hmm. volcanic elements we have in this area. And I'm, yeah, and it's the first structure over there on the wall. Yeah. So when I first got here, they have all these soil samples, and I took pictures of each one. So as as we talk about them, I'll, I'll have them. I don't know why I'm pointing over here. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'm looking at my monitor. Um, but as as um, we talk about them, I'll insert those pictures. So the, so the the soils that where this is coming from is the is, is the first panel. Okay. Now we go to the second panel. Mm -hmm. And we continue with the second 
most dominating soil in the Nile region. It's okay. slate. All right. It's a gray slate. It's very different to Devonian slate. Devonian slate is a little harder. And the slate we have here has more like a loamy structure. Okay. So due to that, it breaks more easily, but it has typic, uh, typical slate character. Okay. Yeah. Slate in general uh, gives you a very different mouth feeling than volcanic. So this is Torn Shiva, it's dry slate, it's the name of the wine in the US market. Okay. And this is a great wine for seafood or yeah, light salads, it's, it's mm. really nicely combined or can be re very nicely combined. I get more. I get more of a peach mm -hmm. quality to it. Um, I even get a little. I even get a little touch of like a. Like a I see more of a tangerine, a little bit, but it's more of a stone fruit uh, quality to this. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you want to talk about the mouth feeling of mm -hmm. slate and volcanic, I think. Slate is always more straight mm -hmm. in the mouth. Yeah, it's it's more like a road, and volcanic is more like winding. Yeah. Yeah. And um, slate for me is always very typical. You can feel it like here. Right in here, the bone. Yeah, on the side. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of mouth watering, salty, citrus elements. Yeah. That's very typical for slate uh, in our case. Yeah. Yeah, I think I th it, it's it feels like the acid's even higher uh, on this. My mouth is just watering. Like not that it wasn't watering the other one. <laughs> it's really watering right now. Um, you know, for those of you out here, if you don't, if you haven't really drink reasons a lot, if you're an acid head when it comes to wine, this is like the wine you drink. You know, there are some other wines that are high in acid. You know, or made in a higher higher acid style. But I mean, Riesling has such a natural high acidity that I mean, it's it's there. And uh, if you love this, this is. Yeah, this is the stuff to drink. <laughs> I think what's also very interesting is if you want to describe the style of Na, and mm -hmm. I always love this comparison because it kind of sums up. It's a, we are geographically right in the middle between Mosel and Rheingau. Okay. And basically the talents of the wines we're making here is exactly the, yeah. Got it. Okay. Mosel and Rheingau are woven in a way because we have simi similar minerality than the Mosel, but the fruit from Rheingau. Okay. And so we have kind of, um, a, a point here, which uh, I think it's it's a very good definition from the wines that are coming from this area. Okay, yeah? that's good. That's good to know. Well, these two are our two basic wines, mm -hmm. and we're going to continue with our erste Lage wines. Okay, uh, you have to go get those, all right? Yeah. Okay, so. Take your microphone oh, yeah, yeah, first. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I actually thought gonna, about that. I'm actually going to stop recording, which is weird because I never stop, but because you have to go over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are continuing with our premier crew, Erste Lage, Roxheimer Höllenfahrt. Höllenfahrt means way or path to hell, if you translate it to English. So this is the opposite of being like, I'm um, staying across from Himmelreich. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's correct. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. <laughs> Um, here, I don't know if, if you, I don't know if yeah, you want yeah. to take a picture. This is uh, the ah. very old label from this vineyard. If you want to, or if you know a little bit about the family, you will find out that uh, parts of our family also own a brewery, a regional one. Ah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, Ernie yesterday was talking about that they're starting some beer. Um, yeah. I mentioned I was going to yeah. be drinking beer. He goes, oh, we do beer too. I'm like, what? Oh, it's not, it's not ready yet. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, don't yeah, tease yeah. me like that. We do beer. Yeah. <laughs> we do, we do beer. Right. And, um, well, this beer part of the family used to own a winery as well, which is was called Gut Leuthof. Gut Leuthof means good people estate. So they were caring for the weak in the society. Okay. It was a very, very um, wonderful place. And you can see it here in the label. Okay. And in the back, you can see the Höllenfahrt. This okay. is the vineyard. And here you can see um, the devil riding the Höllenfahrt barrel, okay. which we adapted to the bottle. So you will still see that on our nowadays Premier Cru bottle. Okay. Yeah. Well, is, this, is this very much like the, the hospice in bone? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Similar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Got yeah. It. and this is uh, the Höllenpfad is the only vineyard in the Nara region with uh, red sandstone, so it's very special. And again, we have a very different type of soil. Yeah? Okay, I'm going to pour the 2018 cask sample. Okay. Yeah, and then the second wine is the first ever made vintage from this vineyard. Okay. So it's not a hundred years ago; it was 2011. <laughs> right. Yeah. Also, um, we. We got a hand on that vineyard like 15, 20 years ago. Okay. And it took us a lot of efforts to get the vineyard back in shape. You know, okay. there was a lot of different wines growing there, Gewürztraminer. We have our sparkling still there. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, Spätburgunder and many different uh, grape varieties. And we really try to, you know, gather the Riesling parcels together and get everything back in shape when you can okay, say so. Yeah. And this really took us a long time. And so we were really proud when we first bottled the Höllenfahrt in 2011. All right. And uh, which which panel is this going to be as far as the soil? It's the very right one over there. Yeah. So yeah, the fill up. So one, two, and three, the rocky oh, uh, right one. So that seventh one, right? The last one? Yeah. The one with the reddish? Yeah. The okay. last one and the last one. Yeah, the right one. Okay. And the last one in the corner with the red, with the red stones. Not the first one from the fourth row. Okay. The, oh, oh, the, so number seven, number and, seven? Num and number, number four. four. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it's a combination of both of those. Yeah. It's okay. basically the same, but here we have, uh, you can see the, the actual rocks. Yeah, the, the rocks and the sandy structure you have. Okay, got it. Yeah. Very typical for Höllenfahrt is uh, it's the spiciness. All right. So, please. Should I do one before the other? Should I do the 11 first? I would do the 18 first. 18 first, because okay. Because it's the, yeah, it's always, we always go from young to old. Okay because it's more easy to approach. If you have the rich oak wines and then the young, it's a little okay. difficult. Hmm. Yeah, you can, already, you can already smell it. Yeah, you can totally tell, tell there's a, a difference I mean, just from the age alone. You know, this one's definitely young. It's, you know, yeah. but when you put it against the 11, you can you can see where it's going to hopefully get to this point in another seven years, mm -hmm. um, seven, eight years. It'll it'll be in this that, that type of environment. I think one of the essential things uh, that are important in terms of uh, reasoning and tasting our wines is our wines deserve a little bit of patience. So even with the basic wines, there's no need to rush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you have the patience and the chance to, I'm very impatient, so I can totally <laughs> get everybody that. I think not, I think a lot of people are. <laughs> yeah, but if you have the chance to leave the wines a little bit please do so because it will be even more pleasant mm -hmm. than the wines uh, are shortly after bottling or in, in a young vintage. Even one year will bring you a completely different wine. Yeah, it, it will be a complete new expression and it will be even more wonderful. Yeah. I mean, you could totally drink either one of these wines. I mean, you could totally drink this 18. Um, it's a, it's a it's just, you would drink it for different reasons. I mean, if you want something that's really refreshing and easy to drink, then 18, totally you can drink it right now. And it's only March of 19, so it, it's not it's not that old. But if you want to get a little more serious and, and kind of sit back and really like enjoy think about yeah. and think about the wine, this 11 is spectacular. You know, and, and it, to me, it's like, wow, I can you know this this 18 gets to this point. It's, just, it's, it's amazing that the wine's going to do that. I know? think the very interesting point in this couple is that 2011 has also been a very warm year. Okay. So very juicy, very round. Um, 
the 18s have an average 0 0.5 more alcohol. Yeah. So of course, after a hot summer, uh, if somebody mm -hmm. does opposite, something wasn't right, right, obviously. Yeah. And same was with 11. So I think um, this is a good match because you can see how uh, the young vintage looks like and how right. it can develop. I think it's it's um, it's it's a good match here. Right. Know? from the vintages. Now what's nice about the 11 is that the acidity is there, but it's not as, not as it's, it's, it's calmed down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. you it's know. a little rounder. It's integrated, yeah. It's, it's rounder. a little late, more laid back. You right, know. yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's still got a beautiful structure, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, 2011, so we have 19, it's eight years now, yeah, and there's still a lot of time for the wine. So even after eight years, there's no need to rush. Right. Yeah? Um, I think we we'll, we always, if people are asking us how long to keep wine, I always say with the, you can always differ by the closure. Yeah? Okay. So um, with the screw cap, I, would, I always say 10 years, okay. yeah, 10 years plus, okay. <laughs> because 10 years is uh, always fine. And with a natural cork, it's at least 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah so all these wines uh, are super patient. Huh? And this was a little excerpt on our premier yeah. cruise. So, and, you know, nosing each one after the other and then just tasting each. I mean, it's all the same. Like, it's all there. The the aromas and, and the flavors are, are all effectively the same. But the, it's, it's a richer, rounder version on the mm. 11. So, again, you can see the progression of what 11, what, what 18 potentially could be become in another eight years, yeah. um, seven, eight years. Um, and uh, that's pretty exciting to, because I don't ever really get to taste something like that. I mean, I've had like like one year off, yeah. but something like that dramatic, it's, I don't get to taste yeah. very often. So yeah. it's yeah. great to see that. For me, it's even interesting to see that you still have the, I always call it white peppery idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, that's that spiciness. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a for me white pepper aroma that this wine has. Right, yeah? and and you see it's carrying on. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and, and this is like the signature of this wine for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So if you want to, we can continue with some Grand Cru's. Sure, let's do that. Uh, yeah. we'll stop real quick and then we'll come right back. Yes. All right. All right, we're back. So um, we kind of talked about this after we, we stopped. Um, you basically are customizing a tasting, and this is what you like to do. You like yeah. to show uh, certain tastings for certain people, but you also like to show – I didn't just walk in and say, show me your best wine, and, and that's not what I want from a winery. I want to show – if they're going to show me some stuff, I want it to be as educational for me as possible. So. If she brought these wines in, I'm kind of like looking at this because we've got three different vintages now. She's so like, if this is too much, I'm like, no, this is exactly what I'd like to see. Um, if, if a winery can do it, not every winery can, you know, not every winery is going to be able to give me back vintages like this. Um, but this is the type of stuff I don't ever, I, I, say, I don't want to say I don't ever. This is the type of stuff that I don't get to do as often. And this is the type of education that I won't necessarily get from reading a book. Um, or necessarily from a seminar. Yes, you could, certain seminars like a Texom, you know, it depends on what they're bringing. Um, you can get some really cool stuff. Uh, for instance, my very first Texom, you know, I Serge Hokar from, um, uh, I can't remember his winery, but I remember his name. Um, <laughs> the Lebanon, uh, um, I feel bad, I'm putting a lower third. Uh, I'm not going to rack my brain, but Serge Hokar, who no longer is no longer with us, brings basically a retrospective of his winery, um, and uh, we had wines from like the 60s. Wow. Yeah. And I actually wasn't able to taste them at the time, so I'll, yeah, <laughs> all I could do was smell them. Um, and long-time viewers will know what happened. I, I won't bring that back up. Anyway, but to, 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 to my point is that... Um, these types of tastings, um, which I do get, 
you know, when I visit wineries is as educational as anything else. So uh, what do we have? We geared up once again. Yeah. <laughs> One more glass. So we continue with our, I would say, most precious Grand Cru. It's called Hermannshöhle. Okay. If you want to translate Hermannshöhle, um, it's called Hermes Cave. Hermes, like the god Hermes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a reference to wine growing being practiced in Roman times in this certain mm -hmm. vineyard. So if you go to Bad Kreuznach, which is like the next bigger city to Oberhausen, you will find a lot of old Roman villas standing there. Right. Yeah, or not standing there, in the ground. Yeah. Okay. And Hermann's Höhle um, is a really wonderfully south-facing vineyard. We've seen it from the top. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's slate driven, covered up with some volcanic elements. Okay. Yeah? And for me, a super interesting uh, wine because it's very lean on the surface. You will first think, well, it's kind of aristocratic, which, are, which sounds a bit <laughs> stupid, I know. But it's kind of, you know, standing upright and right. lean. Okay. And, but if you look underneath, you will find so much of a beautiful slate structure and some nice volcanic elements. So for me, it's one of the best summaries for our estate. It's really a big part of our Riesling heart belongs to this vineyard. So we owe okay. a bit more than, uh, it's eight hectares. We owe a bit more than four hectares there. And the special thing is that the old wines come from the old, uh, the old wines come from the old wines, by the okay. way. <laughs> All right. All the wines come from the old wines. And um, the average age is around 70 years. So we will use the old structures for the dry Grand Cru. Mm -hmm. um, for Spätlese, um, we will use like the 40 year old plot. Okay. Yeah. So we have different use for different plots. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. Yeah. And um, we are going to start again with the 2018. All right. So again, super young, super baby. Is that this one? Yeah. Yeah, I figured that out. This is darker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't pay attention yeah. which ones you were pouring because I, because the eighteens were over here first. I was like, wait a minute. That I mean, I, I could have been wrong. But I was like, that looks like it's darker. I think that's an older wine. Okay. Very so true. So this is the eighteen right here. Then we have a two thousand thirteen in the middle, mm -hmm. and we have nineteen ninety four in the end. Yeah. Thank you. So, please enjoy. So I'm going to nose all these real quick. Man, all right. So I think here, um, again, is a very interesting topic, the vintage. It's really um, when you know the characters of your vineyards, uh, mm -hmm. you can really exert the vintage. You will find, for example, 13 has been, to me, it's a... a wonderful vintage with nice acidity but very exotic elements mm -hmm. for me very typical for 13 and here i totally get that yeah 18 again is a very warm round juicy year mm -hmm. and 94 is a rather lean year with a beautiful um, acidity yeah and what is what's very interesting about the 94 is that you can see what patience with the Dunhoff wine makes. You get this like caramel and coffee flavors. Mm -hmm. You don't get too much of phenolic notes or petrol or whatever. It's always kind of this coffee, toffee, yeah, caramel. Yeah, I see the toffee, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I even get a little mushroomy, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just... There's a richness to it, um, to the 94, even with the 13, I mean, you can still, I mean, it's only a five year difference and you can already see that it's what it's developing. I have to drink the 13, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'm spitting only because I need to, but there's going to be a point where I'm going to stop spitting some things here. <laughs> um, just like yesterday at the very last wine, it was like, okay, I'm drinking the rest of this because at some point you need to enjoy it and not just be analytical with yeah. the wine. Yeah. Um, when, when I do, when I do reviews at home, I'm not driving anywhere, but I still spit. 
Um, but then sometimes maybe it's like the last session because I'll do like three, four, five mm -hmm. shows in a row. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've done upwards of 20 wines in, in, in one sitting with like five or six different shows. But yeah, sometimes at the very end of the night, I'm like, okay, the very last part I'm just going to drink yeah. it because <laughs> now I'm going to reward myself. And sometimes I've, I've set the wines up so that the last set of wines are the mm -hmm. ones I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to have fun with. I think what's really interesting is uh, the term Großes Gewächs. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that a lot of people get confused or don't know what it is. Um, mm -hmm. It's the GG, or before that it was a one with a grape. Mm. Yeah. And uh, it was established in 2003. So 2003 was the first GG Großes Gewächs Grand Cru Vintage okay. in this bottle with this uh, that you could totally differ it from the other wines. Okay. Before that, wines like that have been made. Of course, they were called GG Großes Gewächs, mm -hmm. Grand Cru. It was here, we have a 1994 Spätlese Trocken, so late harvest, but okay. dry. Right. Yeah. And what you have to understand if you taste the wines, you can also feel, I think it's a good multitude for global warming. Mm -hmm. Global warming is an essential topic in winemaking at the yes. moment. Um, if you see the, dif the difference from the wines coming from the 80s or uh, in terms of ripening, then the wines that are coming from nowadays, from the last decade, last 20 years, mm -hmm. you will see in the 80s there were like out of 10 vintages, there were three ripe vintages, three outstanding mm -hmm. vintages. If you see the 2000s, there's like not really a bad vintage. Of course, there are different influences, like the sun, 2003, is super hot year. Right. Um, 2004, wonderful lean year. It, it, we only have great wines, and, and we are really spoiled. And um, right. that's a very interesting thing if you speak about our wines, because um, you can feel the influence of each vintage very beautifully, and we are as I told you all, we are family winery, yeah, and uh, we have a beautiful backbone, which is very essential mm -hmm. to us. It's uh, my father-in-law, Helmut Dönhoff. Who well, I get to meet. <laughs> <laughs> and he has, I think his first vintage was 1966. And if you ever have the chance to meet him, ask him anything. He knows so much about wine history. Right. And we have Cornelius, who is courageous, and he is kind of a geek and a nerd, and he's kind of so down to his wines and focused. And I think um, us, the not so young anymore, but young <laughs> right, generation. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of came up in conversation <laughs> yeah. today already. Yeah. Um, and having this backbone with experience of my father-in-law who knows all the traditions and knows the vineyards and knows a lot of stuff even from historical sites about the vineyards, um, I think the wines will not get any better than they are now. Mm -hmm. Because you have knowledge, historical knowledge and all this, this beautiful backbone and somebody being a pioneer. And I mm -hmm. think this is a beautiful connection. Yeah. I can tell you, these, these wines are awesome. Um, with, with, say, on this particular uh, with this particular vineyard, um, and that you're, um, well, 94 being a, a spätlese, um, was there any botrytis in, or do you keep the botrytis out? We and, keep it out. Okay, all right. It's manually, it's really, uh, uh, last year there wasn't any botrytis, mm -hmm. so, uh, or there was botrytis in the end, but during the year it was very fine, but, okay. um, we were quite early, and so we didn't do any TBA. Last year, there would have been a chance for BA or T. Uh, we did a BA, but no TBA. In case you don't, there's Baron Auschleser, Trock and Baron Auschleser. They're just like even later harvest type yeah. of thing. It's something you you really hate, but when you've done it, you will love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's because it, it's you know it's peeling out every single berry out of the bunch, and it's it's a really intense 
kind of annoying work, which you will love in the end. Right. <laughs> it's like going to the gym. Yeah? There you go. If you go there, there, you're there's like, a no. goal. There's a goal in mind. Yeah. It's a lot of work to, to do it, but at the end, it's very rewarding when, when you see the wine afterwards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very I think my first, uh, I mean, it, we, 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 did, we didn't talk about ice wine, but um, my first ice wine I think I ever had was at Epcot. Oh. Um, I used to work for, uh, I used to work for ESPN Zone, um, <laughs> and this is where I got this. This is my, this is like my favorite hoodie. I can get down to four degrees Celsius, 40 ish, uh, Fahrenheit and it rains and, and it, I stay warm with it. So I love this thing. Um, anyway, so I went down there for, uh, something for work and uh, I remember going into the Epcot thing and, uh. I had actually an ice wine, and I was like, this is kind of cool. I didn't really know what I was drinking at the time. I just had started getting into wine, and that's actually where I started, like, the that particular company because of how they handle – because they uh, they put a lot of their restaurant people through the, the court, the mm. Master Sommelier's uh, introductory course. Mm. So, anyway, yeah. Anyway, that, that was my segue into like into Baron Auschwitz and Chalk and Baron Auschwitz and, 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 and ice wine. It's just those, the, the amount of work involved in making those, there's a reward at the end. I think we will have one later on. Okay. <laughs> to make sure. Hello. Come on in. Please come in. You're on a podcast now. Yeah, that's, that. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> Please come in. It's okay. Hello. Hi, Hi. Hi. I'm Mark. Hi. How are you doing? How's it going? I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. From Bermuda. We're on our way to Provine. Great. So am I. Uh, yeah, I'll be there. You yeah, did that cool. I am. Um, you want to take, take a seat? Matt has a, his wine company in Bermuda. We were import wines. I'm a little jealous. I want to go to Bermuda too. You <laughs> this is a first, like, we're going to trade business cards and stuff. Um, <laughs> This is my this you is know, my um, this is my uh, card here. It has my information about what I do. Um, cool. So well, yeah, that's me. Thank you. So if you don't mind joining us here, yeah, okay. is, is it okay? for Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You're, if you're okay being on video, <laughs> it'll be on the internet. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. Where, yeah, you can sit right there. That's totally fine. Whatever, whatever you want to do. Where do you prefer I sit? I can sit beside you. Where do you, or this side? I don't want to block your view. Yeah. How about? How about, how about right here? Yeah. How, yeah. Right there. You know. Welcome you want to, do to now. It? First of all. Thank you. Very nice. Very exciting. <laughs> Thank you for popping in. Anytime. Who, who you. hit you? Oh, he did. Oh. No. Did you see what the other guy looked like? Camera. I don't. That's all right. Gym. That's all right. We just been talking about the gym and the hard work and the reward that yeah. That's cool. Um, so, we just finished the dry wines. Yeah. If you want to uh, like have a taste, they're still here. Cool. I can just put them over there and give you... <laughs> <laughs> and um, we will continue with the off-dry wines. That's great. Okay, so, sure. Yeah. Yeah? All right, we'll do that. So we're so we're back. Uh, our guests are behind the camera. They're actually going through the wines that we did and taking notes. So they may ask us questions and stuff like that. So you'll hear that. Um, so we're we're going to continue with another set of wines. All right, let's do it. Okay, we move on to. Uh, so we left or uh, we leave the dry wines behind and move on to our off dry, okay. fruity wine segment. And there I will have our basic estate riesling, which uh, with which we will start. Okay. So we have the very first wine that we had in this session was our uh, dry QBA. Basically, mm -hmm. it's the same wine, but here uh, it's uh, we stopped fermentation by cooling down, and so we have some more of RS. Okay. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can just. Have it, put it on ice and just have a good afternoon or evening. Yeah, it's <laughs> right. always a good starter. And for me, it's one of my uh, favorite wines okay. to relax. Okay, yeah. got it. It's, uh, nice and fruity. And for me, the best thing in this wine is that you can like it. Either you prefer dry or fruity style wines. And I think this is always a talent if... Uh, Riesling lovers that like fruity wines can have the wine as well as people that mm. prefer the dries. Yeah. 
And this is really not too opulent, it's very casual, but still it's beautifully not, yeah. structured, yeah. And while there, there is a little bit of uh, residual sugar, it's not a whole lot. You know, it's it, it's just like it kind of balances out the acidity. Like like Matthew was saying, rip in acidity for the 18, so that, that little bit of sugar helps balance that out. So you still get the acid because the mouth is watering a lot, but it bounces on the flavor profile. I think it's very important for the fruity wines to have the balance. Mm -hmm. If you just have the fruitiness or if you just have the acidity, it doesn't isn't a good match. Right. You always need to have the like woven these two factors. Other and this. I think it's really important to point that out because this makes the Nahn, the Rheingau and the Mosel a very unique place because you can do like off dry and fruity sweet wines mm -hmm. with a beautiful um, corset of acidity and I think this is almost like a unique spot in the world in right. this um, bright variety yeah mm -hmm. so you have a lot of different styles here and a lot of different soils and this is makes even fruity wine super interesting right yeah very nice i like that then we right. have mm -hmm. sorry yeah then we have we have a couple more right here yeah we have two cabinets Okay. And the interesting part here is we have one cabinet from the upper part of the Nar. If you just go back over there, you can see uh, this little set in front of the picture. Do you, can you get it? Where? Stand up. Oh, what? I see. Hold on. <laughs> and this will actually reach all the way over there. So this little thing right here? It's cool, is it, huh? Is what you're talking about right here? First vintage. Yes, perfect. Yeah, okay. Because it's really good maybe um, for you later on, for you guys. This yeah, is absolutely. Um, a summary of all our Grand Cru's and where they are located. So oh, cool. we are here in the valley. And up here it's uh, Bad Kreuznach. And this is literally the door to Rheinhessen and Rheingau. So wines coming from up here have, an, has, have a different opulence or a okay. different structure than the wines coming right here from the valley where the winery is located. Okay. And um, I'm explaining all that because now we have a wine coming from the door to Rheinhessen and Rheingau. And we have a wine coming from the Leistenberg the tone shiver that we had right. before in the off dry quality. Okay. And this is a very great couple because you can differ these areas very nicely over the wines. You'd see that the area here has a different opulence than the area down here. And um, I think it's always interesting to to see that. Right. Yeah? So the Leistenberg, we had the tone shiver, the dry slate before. This right. is the fruity, the okay. Oberhäuser Leistenberg cabinet. And then we have the very difficult pronunciation, Kreuznacher Krötenfuhl Kabinett. So if you had one glass of wine and you can pronounce that, you will win a bottle of wine here at the winery. <laughs> we'll one more time again. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's called Kreuznacher Krötenfuhl Kabinett. Uh, Krötenfuhl is a frog. Where is that on here? There. Okay. You would try? So. Okay, go on. Go ahead. You can win a bottle of wine. Yeah, okay. You need glasses? <laughs> I actually have reading glasses <laughs> over here. I don't have quite enough light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to... So I mean, I, I read this. I read through this, but it was like... It, the, the, all right. So a Krötenpool is a frog pond just to give you an idea. And the Krötenfuhl is uh, on the um, water reserves of the city of Bad Kreuznach. So it's a very ecological, very beautiful vineyard. And the Leistenberg is again the slate structure we have here in the valley. So Kreuznachser Krötenfuhl. Wonderful. Wunderbar? Wunderbar. <laughs> Wunderbar. <laughs> <laughs> And I think it's German uh, looks scary to us Americans, but if you have an idea of how it's pronounced and then you just kind of sound it out, 
we talked in the car about the, 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 the German words that have 50 letters in it, but then you said that Polish is even worse. Yeah. So, <laughs> Very true. so yeah. <laughs> Very true. All right. So, um, oh, so this is. So you, I, I won't tell you, you have to guess. So we have. No, this was from the. We have slate structure. Mm -hmm. The Leistenberg, and Leistenberg. we have that, the Krötenfuhl from Pebbles. So okay. Krötenfuhl is more herbal, and Leistenberg is again this like sl slaty topic. Okay. So you have to guess. I won't tell you. No, I remember this is the Leisten. I remember, <laughs> I remember how you poured You're, it. Ah. I remember how you poured it. It says, can you remember how? Is it Leisten? What? One more time. Leisten what? Leistenberg. Leistenberg. Slaty Hill. Leistenberg. If you translate okay. it. Leistenberg. And this was the one that was on the Bavarian side, right? You listened to me I today. Did. <laughs> I did listen. At least somebody did. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. What, can I ask you a quick question about these dry ones? Yeah. What food do you pair this with? Like, Depending. For example, um, the Tonschiefer is very nice with any type of seafood, light salad, light cheeses. It's mm -hmm. a great start. It's like a table wine yes. idea. Yeah. Um, the Hohen part is with any meat yeah and the 11 you could also do richer meat like duck meat slightly greasy meats yeah yes. the grand cru you can pair with anything right. yeah. there's not yeah there's not a hesitation in uh, anything from like really wonderful um fish to one of very good veal or whatever you mm -hmm. have yeah. uh, to uh, lobster there, there's a plenty of chances with those it i think it depends a little bit on the ripeness level what yeah. you can combine yes and um, with the younger wines it's a little easy with the exotic spicy ideas and with the um with a little bit more ripe they get a little creamier a little rounder yeah I think you can add wonderful, uh, like, if we want to go high class, we can add lobster, or if you yeah. want to uh, some, like, veal, or there's plenty of combinations. Last question for you, I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. The 2018s, where do you see them on the ripeness scale? And do you see them being age-worthy ones? Or do I you think so. Um, that I think there is quite a similarity to 2011, which you happen to have on the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah? because 2011 was very round, very ripe, 0.5 more alcohol, which is very similar to this. 2018 has been a little warmer than 2011. Um, I hated 2011 for a very, very long time. <laughs> really yeah. did, yeah. But it beautiful yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Since it was really a long time. You, it it was not good to taste. Not not only Dunhoff, any 2011, I didn't like it all. Yeah. And now, since one year, one and a half, they are really opening up and getting really wonderful. Mm. So uh, I'm happy that I tasted 2011 right. again. So I'm lucky. Very about nice. That. Yeah. Yeah. So here we have the two different structures again. We have right. the pebbly soil, Krötenfuhl, frog pond, and um, it's very herbal. It's a little rounder. Mm -hmm. And we have the slate again here, leaner on the palate. For me, a very beautiful couple to taste together. And if you don't want to have sparkling as your starter, you can have, for example, like a cabinet. It's a beautiful, yes. beautiful starter for me. It fits with any food, even if you have like leather washed, we call it here. Okay. Yeah, or, or some 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 wurst, some sausage, um, or even if you have slightly spicy Asian dishes, mm -hmm. cheeses. Right. These wines uh, are very patient, and you can pair them with, with almost anything. Yeah. So it's really I I'm sure or I haven't really seen a cup a match that's not good. As a starter, you can have some mm -hmm. nice brioche with a little bit of goose liver. You can go from a simple sandwich to anywhere you want right. to go. Yeah. This is a great like contrast here of start of, of just of just these two. Yeah, I'm kind of speechless right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can take all those. Sure. Yeah. 
stealing your bottles, man. Yeah, go ahead. It's all right. I'll He'll punch you later. in the face on the yeah, other I'll eye. Yeah, I'll the other eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So between the drive and the sweet style, mm -hmm. what is your personal favorite for the estate? Because I feel like, well, I'm not going to say that. You tell me. What do you mean by my favorite? Do you have, do you have a favorite child? Yeah. It's really, it really depends on my mood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, if I should just choose one quality, I would always go for the cabinet. Yes. Which one's the cabinet? Does it say on there? It, yeah, it should say. Minute. Yeah, got it, yes. Yeah. So we should taste this, this one first. It's, the yeah, it's the, it's the basic estate whistling yeah. from Volcanic Soil with some Aras. Yeah. And for me, I re this is really a wonderfully casual but still structured wine. Yes. How much residual sugar? Around 20 grams. Okay. Yeah. And it's not much of alcohol, so no, yeah. beautiful wine, yeah. That's, That's really well made, balanced. Mm -hmm. You drink now. At least we tried. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Compared to the truck in the 18, for mm -hmm. me it's such high acid. I'm like, it needs to settle down so. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not bottled yet. It's okay. all cast samples. Yeah. 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 yeah, we hope to bottle next week. Keep fingers crossed. With mm -hmm. uh, there's Provine right. ahead, so everybody's done after Provine. They are all a little tired. Yeah, yeah. I bet. <laughs> um, we'll find out. Yeah. So if you want to, we can continue with some Spätle. I get the last wines. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're back. Uh, Matthew has joined us on camera now. I do. Uh, he doesn't have a microphone on, so we'll just we'll get his audio. I'll from, talk into this yeah. one. Don't worry. Anne's microphone <laughs> will pick it up enough. Um, so uh, we're gonna we're, we're finishing off with some other wines here, and um, uh, oh, wine looking over there. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're we're wrapping all this up with some uh, some some pretty cool wines here, badass as we could say. It's if you just <laughs> talked about. Am I uh, is anyone allowed to swear on my podcast? And they're yeah, I don't care. <laughs> like you saw la last week's. Hey, last week's. You know, um, we we had a little. A little f bomb here and there, but um, what, it was what, great. What are we tasting? Yeah, what are we tasting over here? Um, we taste Oberhäuser Brücke. Oberhäuser Brücke. Brücke is bridge, mm. and Oberhausen is obviously the village, or not obviously the village where we are located here. <laughs> right, yeah. Super tiny, 300 people, by the way, so uh, you won't get lost here. You won't get lost, yeah. You can try at least, yeah, but it will be very hard. Oberhäuser Brücke is located close to the bridge. This is where the name is referring to. Okay. And it's a very tiny plot. We saw it from the top. Maybe you will put a mark there. Was that uh, the, 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 the strip? Yeah, the strip. Okay, yeah. yeah. And it's um, very famous for uh, fruity and noble sweet wines. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for two years, we're doing now a Grand Cru from there, which we will auction on the VDP auction. So there's always a very limited uh, amount of 400 bottles of dry Grand Cru from this vineyard. And we're having some of this. <laughs> no, you're not. No. You're having late harvest. And late harvest. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Never. not finished yet. Not so finished, yeah. um, we are we're again doing a little bit of time traveling and yes. hopping. You don't have the 2004. Thank you. Which, so, what are we starting with, though? The 18? I would 18. suggest to start with the 18 because yeah. it's always a little easier to start with a young wine and then continue with the ripened ones. Um, here again, we have a little bit of age difference, so 14 years. And um, Oberhäuser Brücke is, uh, is a very interesting vineyard because it's very close to the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's protected from two hills and it has, we spoke a lot about different types of soil today. And the Oberhäuser Brücke is literally a summary of any type of soil. So we have slate, volcanic, uh, river sediments, pebbles, everything in a tiny, tiny parcel from 1.1 hectare. And um, Oberhäuser Brücke has really many deep layers. It's something okay. that's really beautiful when it's young. But if it comes to age, it shows its real beauty for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, very elegant wine. Yeah. Very delicate, soft, but still with acidity, like mm -hmm. that, that. That is showing. Like, it, it, how much sugar is in that one? Eighty grams. Eighty grams, mm -hmm. and the acid is still perfectly yeah. balanced. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can you can 
you can feel the acid, but it's not it's not like they're ripping acidity from the from the trocken. But um, yeah, it's delicious. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I oh think my God. four, huh? Yeah. So four different. is a super delicate year for mm -hmm. uh, Spätlese. Wonderful year. It has a beautiful acidity and beautiful ripeness level and um, after 2003, which was a super hot year, 2004 was literally literally like like a relief, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we really love this vintage in terms of late harvest mm -hmm. spät laser wines. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. What, what do you pour that? What's your favorite thing to pair with this? Mm -hmm. To be honest, I opened it yesterday, mm -hmm. and we spoke about duck. Duck. Okay. Yeah. Duck with this. Yeah. How do you cook the duck? Like Asian, Asian duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could see that. Crispy yeah. skin. Huh? Yeah, yeah, and plum. I, I just we had uh, a we Vietnamese had... duck last night. Yeah, yeah. like a plum beautiful. sauce. And too, I yeah. think yeah, this would be like yes. my perfect. Yeah, because the sweetness offsets. Yeah. yeah, but it, yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, and um, God, that's good. For me, a wine like this you can have with any wild meat. It's also beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's. Um, it has, you know, you still get the primary aromas, but the secondary are on the palate. Mm. And for me, it's really super beautiful. Okay. Yeah. How's your, how do you feel about Botrytis? Um, in that certain year or in general? In 04, did you get there? No, no. there wasn't any. Yeah. In 5 and 6, nice. there was a lot of Botrytis going on. Yeah. In 11, a little bit. In 18, by the end, there was some Botrytis, but we sell, select Botrytis out. So do you like this wine without Botrytis? <laughs> Most of the time, are you picking to make sure that there's none in this cuvee? Yeah. 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 Because it's a pure... A very yeah, pure purity is always yeah. a topic that we love to talk about. Yeah, the wines shouldn't be too opulent, too sweet, too high honey too much of anything yeah. we uh, try to find a natural balance that is not you know too round or whatever right yeah uh, botrytis is always giving a certain heavy structure on the wines mm -hmm. and this simply doesn't fit of course you have some tendencies if you have a vintage that has is botrytis driven or has a certain um botrytis tendency it, I think it's important to also reflect parts of that because it's the vintage, right? It's the vintage, mm -hmm. yeah. But and yes. and we can, you know, we're not doing here any fabrical product or any industry products. We do mm -hmm. individual, very individual, handmade products that right. have to reflect the heritage on the one right. hand and the vintage on the other hand. Very good. And this is like it's got such purity. None of the marmalade, none of that, yeah. none of that shows. It's just um, minerality and fruit. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Do you guys sell this one? Mm -hmm. no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> As an importer, you gotta ask. It's a nice question. You know, question. I mean, this is. I just, I just like again it's having contrast, like time traveling. We we have some contrast here on these two wines. I'm not gonna spit that one. It's okay. okay. <laughs> I think it's always interesting to see a super baby, which is not mm -hmm. bottled yet, cast sample, and something of age, and uh, to see where the road can lead you, yeah, where so, the potential is. On this cast sample, and, and we didn't really bring this up with, with the winemaking about filtration and, and finding and all that, um, this is right out of the cast, but you, you're talking about wanting to bottle it like next week. Mm -hmm. um, do you has this maybe gone through some fining or do you do any fining and and then or filtration just filtration just filtration. we try to influence the wine as less as possible that okay. means we have the pressing unit right here on our level then the wine falls into the cellar into wooden casks mm -hmm. then we ferment the wines in the wooden cask leave them for some time on the fine yeast and depending on the wine and depending on the grape variety the wine will go with the fine yeast to stain the steel okay there we will mix them up from time to time again depending on the quality if it's a grand cru it will last longer okay. if it's a basic estate reasoning of course it will be wrecked earlier okay and from there we will um, just wreck the wines and then do the blend and pump pump them to bottom. so okay. we, we, what you can feel in our wines is in general a, a natural co2 mm -hmm. this is from uh, our wine making process if you want to call it so because we try to 
not to pump. And therefore, we have from the fermentation, we have the natural CO2, which you can always feel in the young wines. Okay. You feel it for sure in those trucks. Yeah. 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 And what's yeah. in it like to yeah. the CO2? Yeah, what, what made me think about that, because this, this 18 seems to be a little bit cloudier. Mm -hmm. uh, on the visual than the other ones. Yeah, uh, maybe perfect. I just didn't. Maybe I didn't notice it, but it seemed a little. It's cloudy. not ready yet. Yeah. It's simply not ready yet. This is a raw version of yeah. what's going to be bottled. The the basic wines are going to be bottled in the next week. So mm -hmm. the basic estate Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, the cabinets. But this is a cru. This is um, Oberhäuser Brücke Single Vineyard Late Harvest. This will be bottled end of May. Okay. So it still needs. Time, yeah. It's still, I mean, it, you say, I mean, I'm sure it needs time, but it's still really nice. I mean, con considering it's still really young. Um, it's a beauty, very primary. Yeah, but this yeah. is, I think, again, the talent of Riesling to have it at a very young stage, as mm -hmm. well as leave it for some time. Yeah. Who are your other favorite producers in this area? Put Basically, we are super. <laughs> <laughs> we are really spoiled in the Nile region yeah. because we um, we are a tiny region and we have many great producers, many wonderful producers doing wonderful different stuff. Yeah. So um, all our colleagues from the VDP do, you know, it's a tiny region, but they reflect different parts and different talents of the region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Um, so, so what, it, what like emerging talents are you seeing? Are you seeing it in sparkling? Are you seeing reds start to come into play? Like with, you know. we spoke before about global warming, so yeah. we have different harvest and growing conditions. Uh, if you go back to the eighties, there was a whole different story, and I think at the moment we have perfect conditions for riesling. Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, yeah. wonderful grape varieties growing here. Sparkling is for sure a topic. Yeah. For us, uh, we started in 2013 get, doing vintage sparklings from single vineyards. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Grand Cru sparklings, if you want to put it like that. Yeah. And I think Benar has, I said it earlier, has this wonderful talent to have the best out of two worlds. We have minerality similar to Mosel and fruit similar to Rheingau, and this is nicely woven at this point. And this is what makes Na very unique, not too opulent in style. And there is also in good years everything. Everything is possible. Yeah, yeah. Not in every year, yeah, not in, in colder years. A Pinot Noir, I don't know. Maybe then you should speak to a producer of that because <laughs> right. we will um if we have a wonderful year like 18 we will do like a little little bit just a little fun. barrel for fun pinot noir mm. because my husband uh, is Did also you, passionate so you, for, for so, that so you planted pinot noir um, not a lot not a lot yeah, yeah. it's, it's an old parcel in the hern part mm. and um it's used for sparkling and if we have if the year is intense enough we will do pinot noir okay Okay, so we continue with Oberhäuser Brücke and have, uh, I think, a quite famous ice wine, the 2010. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. That is really, really one of the best ice wine vintages recently, recently, super rare. Thank you. And very exciting. So ice wine is... Uh, something very special in our house and it's getting rarer i really have to say that because we don't get the cold winters anymore too much okay. or too late so um to have so for the for the purpose of explaining to my viewers what is how, what what makes ice wine what it is ice wine ah was a question yeah no, i fell yeah, asleep yeah. short <laughs> it's all right sorry um so ice wine is uh, something that is done after the actual harvest because um, normally you need to have temperatures from, from at least minus 7 degrees to do an ice wine. Okay. And you need to have healthy grapes. That is also very helpful. And it's really even the process to decide when you will pick the ice wine is uh, very difficult because you will go out hour after hour checking on the consistency of the grape. It's like doing a good steak. You okay. Can compare that. You need to have the certain consistency yeah. to have the right condition to press the ice wine. Yeah. Okay. So we will gather as a family. Everybody will get a lamp on his head. <laughs> go out and pick everything very very quick normally between six and nine in the morning because then the coldest time here yes and then the 
little ice cubes yeah okay. will go on a champagne basket press okay. and it's really impressive because you can see what comes out is it's when you like swirl your Sugar, glass right. you can see it's really extract yeah, yeah, yeah? Okay. and um, this is really really exciting because the remains uh, the rest in in the press is ice and the grape skin okay yeah, and you have this really rich extract flowing out. So the water remains in the press and the extract is what you get. Yeah. And it's really, really intense. Uh, here we're speaking about 200 grams of residual sugar. How do you ferment that? It takes forever, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. never stopping. And even when you did the pressing, it's not said that it will ferment. Yeah, you never know, right? You never know. It's, yeah. it's a, do, do you inoculate with the yeast or do you try to put yeah. it like... It, it, it we need to inoculate because uh, here the danger is too high with uh, any spontaneous fermentation or anything. Okay. We want to have a wonderfully pure ice wine that is reflecting the terroir, having the acidity and doing what it's doing. Yeah? It's and just delicious too, my God. Yeah, I totally love ice wine. It's not something that I want to have every day, but it's... Right, special occasions. Right? Yeah. Like this. Yes. Like this. Yeah. Prost. <laughs> right? I have to get some ice wine. You walked in at the right time. Yeah. Very good. For you? I'll, I'll pour some off camera. Yeah. Prost. Cheers. So now you kind of have an understanding why these are the rare, why they're rarities and why they are they cost what they cost. You know these these are labor intensive things and you're you're risking you're risking your grapes by letting yeah. them stay because you're harvesting these things in what December. Boxing Day, very very favorite yeah. day, New Year's Eve, everything you don't yeah. want to be. You don't want to be working. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Iceman has this certain feeling on that, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna make you work yeah. more. Mm. <laughs> Monday morning work. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really wonderful and 2010 has been an extremely wonderful vintage for ice wine due to the acidity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, again we have this kind of exotic aromas here. Right, yeah. May I try that um the uh, 18 again? Is that okay? This of point? course. You can as just as want to go back to that for a second. Yeah, I mean, you got some great apricot in here. And I would even say like some Smoke. some date, mm. um, fig. So you have the density, but it's yeah. not overwhelmingly dense. That you 200 grams of sugar. And this yeah. is fresh. It, it does not taste like I mean, you, you taste it. You taste the yeah. sweetness, but it's it's not like super sweet. You're like going, oh, and you, I mean, yeah. it's like, it is very refreshing. Yeah. yeah. The acidity is really... Yeah. yeah. You can smell the, uh, the VA or the uh, nail, a touch of nail polish remover, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's mm -hmm. just the style, right? Because it's very typical, have, yeah. Yeah, it's so typical, yeah. But, it, but it works well with the complexity yeah. of yeah. one. Yeah. I like it. It's not yeah. offensive at all. It's but how do you know how nail polish smells? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's not a black guy. That's the mm. rest of the mascara, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's makeup. <laughs> makeup, right? Could be. Could be. You should see the other guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's still got his nail polish. Uh, yeah, he's just nail polish his makeup on, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting to go back to this wine. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it a punch in the face? Yeah, basically. Pretty you like that? <laughs> <laughs> Again. Is that the 18 over there? 18 score. Yeah, let me, let me do that real quick. This is actually going to be one of my coolest episodes because I have people just like popped in and <laughs> hop on camera. I mean, seriously. This from, is the like, Bahamas, that yeah, was, from the Bahamas. That was very hey, expensive. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah, from the Bahamas. Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. There was that one time, though. Bermudas. Oh, yeah, oh, Bermuda, a, Bahamas. It was a B word, you know. Would, yeah, you know I'm female. Barbados. How can I tell? Barbados. Oh, man, that's hard. Yeah, I know. What can thank I you say? for sharing your wines with us. Thank, thank you for mm -hmm. allowing us to come on. We picked the right day to come. Uh, can you take a picture of us here? Yeah, sure. Mm. Being busy. Yeah. Wow. Fromage. 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 <laughs> 
Okay, <laughs> whatever. Oh yeah, what, what, what do other people I say nice day say? Do they do they say to say cheese? Because we say cheese, so you smile. I don't know what you say uh, other than that. You know? Here, a lot of people say just reasoning. Reasoning. <laughs> say reasoning. Ice wine. Ice wine. <laughs> At least I just say alcohol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this was this was absolutely amazing. So. Um, Again, yet another, uh, I live a very charmed life in having this type of experience. Um, and thank you so much for my pleasure, like opening all these awesome wines and, and taking me through a really great educational experience. Um, and taking all the time. Uh, and Matthew, thank you for like popping in, huh? hanging out with yeah, us. And, this is great. Um, <laughs> I'll be watching the episode. Yeah. Uh, do you, want, do you want me to put your information? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Send it through, so man. Send it I'll through. put it. So I'll have Matthew's oh, no, no. information. Yeah. I'll have I'll have his information. The witness protection program person. We won't say anyway. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, I'll have his information also down below in the, in the description and the link on the website if you want to contact them. Um, if you're in Bermuda, if you're in Bermuda, you Bermuda Barbados, Bahamas, somewhere. Whatever. <laughs> the Bermuda, B word. The B word. Um, and uh, I also have links for everything with Don Hoff and all, all the stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, and if you go to my website, uh, you get the links above. You can click those to friend me up. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm still kind of speechless uh, today. It was just too amazing day. I still have more to do later on. Um, so uh, I don't know how they're going to top this. Not that this is no. a competition at all, but you know, they do have a vineyard named the Doctor too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that that's going to be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, uh, so thank you all for stopping by. See, I don't say that other word. Uh, and we'll see everyone again <laughs> next time. Bye. <laughs>